Thank you all very much. You know, uh, for those of you that don't know who I am, uh, I, I've been an entrepreneur my entire life. Um, I think it's important. Uh, I think it's important that you have an entrepreneur running for president of the United States. I started a one-man handyman business in Albuquerque in 1974. Me, third year in college, and uh, actually grew that to employ over a thousand employees. Uh, electrical, mechanical, plumbing, pipe fitting, uh, engineers, architects. American dream come true. Show up on time, do what you do, do what you say you'll do for people, do a little bit more than what you say you'll do for people. I'd never been involved in politics prior to running for governor of New Mexico. Uh, I went and I introduced myself to the Republican Party a couple of weeks before I announced. They said, we like you, we like what you've got to say, but you just need to know that you will never get elected governor in a state that's two to one Democrat. So I was really outside of the political process completely, and I did get elected. Uh, I made a name for myself vetoing legislation. I may have vetoed more legislation than the other 49 governors in the country combined. I vetoed 750 bills, thousands of line item vetoes, only two were overridden, so it made a difference when it came to billions of dollars worth of spending. It made a difference when it came to government passing laws that really were just going to cost us time and money to have to comply with. And I stood up to that, and I vetoed those le pieces of legislation. I always wrote a veto message, and um, I think the um, uh, I think the verdict was passed by citizens of New Mexico who, in a state that was two to one Democrat, voted to re-elect me by a bigger margin the second time than the first time. So, um, in this election right now, I I'm the only candidate that wants to end the wars. I'm the only candidate that wants to get out of Afghanistan now, bring the troops home. I'm the only candidate that doesn't want to bomb Iran. The only candidate that believes that marriage equality is something that is constitutionally guaranteed. I want to end the drug wars. I want to bring about meaningful uh, immigration reform with a basis in the fact that immigration is a good thing uh, and that we should promote those that want to come into this country and work uh, and make it as easy as possible for them to get work visas. I'm the only candidate that wants to balance the federal budget now. Uh, and that means taking on the entitlements. That means taking on Medicare, uh, Medicaid, and uh, uh, military spending. Uh, I'm promising to submit a balanced budget to Congress in the year 2013, uh, and that means a 43% reduction in military spending, believing that the biggest threat to our national security is the fact that we're borrowing and printing money to the tune of 43 cents out of every dollar that we're spending. And the result of what we're doing right now, I think, ultimately is going to lead to a monetary collapse in this country. And a monetary collapse, very simply, is when the dollars that we have won't buy a thing. Because of the ensuing inflation that goes along with printing money to the tune of 43 cents out of every dollar that we're spending, our dollars aren't going to buy anything. And the government does not announce that two weeks from today there's going to be a monetary collapse, so go take all the money you have, buy everything that you possibly can, because two weeks from tomorrow your money won't buy anything. It just happens. There will be a bond market collapse, and it will be a bond market collapse due to this unsustainable debt that we are racking up. So I do think that there is an absolute valid alternative to the two parties, uh, and, it, and it's me. Uh, I do have more executive governmental experience than the other two candidates combined, and that governmental executive experience is saying no to government spending. Uh, I'm not the guy who wants uh, government-controlled health care. I'm the only one that doesn't want government-controlled health care. I think... as the other two candidates know the difference between big business slash crony capitalism and free markets. I support free markets. I support the notion that we can create a level playing field in this country for everybody, as opposed to loopholes are for sale and uh, the crony capitalism that goes along with the two-party system. 
I am also the only candidate that wants to abolish the IRS, abolish corporate tax, abolish income tax, abolish withholdings from your payroll check. I'd like to replace that with one federal consumption tax. I am advocating the fair tax, uh, which I think is cost neutral over a very short amount of time. Uh, I also think that uh, it, it will create tens of millions of jobs in this country because in a zero corporate tax rate environment, if the private sector doesn't create tens of millions of jobs, if manufacturing from around the world doesn't return to the United States, I don't know what it's going to take to do that. It's also the answer when it comes to China making our exports 23% uh, more competitive. So there is a clear third choice. And right now, um, I do need to be uh, on the polls. I need to be in the polls that de 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 determines who's in the national debates. Right now, I'm anywhere at a low of 6% and a high of 15%, uh, depending on which state is being polled, but it's a low of 6%. So on our website, GaryEJohnson2012.com, if you could get on there and just call all of the polling organizations, I have a sense that if my name is just simply in the polls, that 15% uh, will actually take place. And that's the scenario to win, is to be on the national debate stage against uh, Romney and Obama, presenting a clear third choice. It could either be crash and burn at that point, but I don't think that's going to be the point. I don't think that's uh, going to be what would happen. Uh, I, I think there would be an incredible amount of interest, and, not, and, and what we need to do is generate interest. What we need to do is just get people to take a look and when people take a look, um, uh, I think I think choices are really clear. I think speaking with a broad brush stroke, the majority of Americans in this country are fiscally responsible and socially tolerant, uh, socially accepting. I'm certainly in that category, but I don't think either of the major parties uh, have done well in, in either category. Um, I am really excited by the notion of being Libertarian President of the United States and challenging Democrats uh, from the left. Look, abolish the Patriot Act. Abolish Homeland Security. Get out of Afghanistan. Let's not bomb uh, Iran. Let's bring an end to the war on drugs. That's challenging Democrats in an area that they're supposed to be good at, civil liberties. And then it, it would be an exciting notion to me to be Libertarian President of the United States challenging Republicans uh, on what they're supposed to be good at, which is dollars and cents. And they're not so good at dollars and cents. But let's balance the federal budget. Let's do it now. And Gary, as President of the United States, I, Gary Johnson, am going to veto this Republican spending measure because it spends too much money. It doesn't address the problems that we have, and the problems that we have start with a balanced budget. So I really want to thank all of you for being here. Uh, Adrian pointed it out. Um, it, it is a, a campaign that does need money, but I will tell you that we're being really, really effective with just a fraction of a penny relative to their dollars. So I would be excited by this. I am excited by it. I, I'm, I'm really heartened by this. Uh, I think this is going to make a huge impact. Uh, I am but a spokesman for the liberty movement. Uh, as Ron Paul has said, I think Ron Paul's candidacy is going to officially come to an end here uh, next month. And when that happens, um, there is a viable alternative to voting for Ron Paul. And it's not a compromise vote. It would be a vote for me. And that's also a way to get this to 15% and bring about a national discussion that actually points to solutions that go along with the problems that we do face in this country. So thank you again. Thank you all of you for your activism. And I would just ask you to take that a little bit further get online, make a call to all these polling organizations, and just ask them to include my name. That does not, that does not seem like such an onerous request. And uh, isn't this country about uh, liberty and freedom and personal choice? And uh, if, I had a, if I had a button, it would be, I am pro-choice uh, with regard to everything.
thank you very much. Absolutely. If uh, anybody has any uh, any questions or any comments or any insults, please. Yes. So the question is, is uh, how, how did I actually get elected the governor of New Mexico being outside of the Republican Party and uh, being outside of politics totally? And here's how it went down. If I had to list the number one reason for why I got elected uh, governor of New Mexico, uh, the it was it was 1994, end of February. Uh, the primary was in June. End of February, they did a poll which had me at 2% of the Republican vote. Are you getting this? 2% of the Republican vote at the end of February. Now, we were ecstatic because we really hadn't launched into what was a planned advertising campaign. But starting the 1st of March, we ran three very cutting-edge ads on television. We bombarded the airwaves with three cutting-edge ads, three cutting-edge ads that were made by the same guy who's made our recent cutting-edge ads, uh, Evan Tweed. And in that three-week period, I went from 2% of the Republican vote to 25% of the general election vote in just three weeks. Now, what that was, was people just taking a look. You know, it's one thing to be drawn by an advertisement and a, wow, I like what I hear, I need to check this out further. That's the process. I like what I hear, but I gotta check it out. Well, that's all we're trying to generate here, is just check it out. But you gotta get people to check it out in the first place, and if they'll just check it out, um, I'm confident that that this could actually be a, a three-way race, that I could actually be a president in the United States. So that's dependent on contribution, and what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna run these cutting-edge ads in a couple of selected states where we, we will do polling ahead of time, and then we'll do polling afterwards and make that a sales tool. I really believe that, that these ads that we've come out with lately, that if uh, the entire country saw them in a three-week period that I would be at 25% of the general election vote. Arizona did a poll a couple of weeks ago. I was at 9% of the Arizona vote. 80% of Arizonans don't know who I am. The 20% that know who I am, 9% are gonna vote. Half of them are gonna vote for me. That, that's heartening. That is, not, that is not anything to be discouraged about. That's something to really, in my opinion, be excited about. And it is a message. I think that I understand, I appreciate that every single one of you, if given the opportunity, would be up here doing what I'm doing. And maybe you'd do a better job. So why didn't I run for a U.S. Senate in New Mexico? Um, you know, a lot is also said about um, getting along. You know, how are you going to get along? You know, Congress needs to get together. The president, everybody needs to work together in this country. Well, work together to me is just code for how are we going to spend money. And in that context, I don't want to be in the U.S. Senate. I don't want to be in the U.S. Congress because I think that's the root of all evil. It's, it's a job that's based on bringing home the bacon, and whether we like it or not, it's how much bacon can you bring home, and I have no intention of bringing home any bacon. My intention would be to balance the federal budget, and I think my voice running as President of the United States is more effective at bringing across that message than if I were to run in New Mexico as a senatorial candidate.